What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? What's going on? We can start in a minute here. What's going on guys? Get started soon. Hello. Uh, hey, Will. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are Sorry you? Sorry about my little delay. DoorDash was coming here, and I had to go open the door for the people. <laughs> disinfect. Disinfect. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, he looked like he was a character out of a TV show. He had his mask, gloves, and we did a quick exchange. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Nice to I'm meet good, you. I'm good. You know, just chilling, just hanging in there, still in my pajamas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you guys for having me. You and Black Solutions and Chris over there. Thank you. Yes. No, thank you for uh, thank you for coming back. A lot of big things coming up for you. So pretty excited to talk about that. Awesome. Let me get up close. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back, Angela White. Welcome thank back. you. Excited nice to, to meet you, time. Will, too. I mean, we've never met. I know. Pleasure's all mine. I'm glad we finally get to Good to meet. This is great. All right. Why don't we get started? Okay. You, you don't mind me drinking my tea, do you? No, Sorry, not at all. Down. Okay, good, good. Not at all. Um, we'll so since, since our last interview, can you tell us anything about any, uh, any new projects you've been working on? So what have you been working on? Yeah, so uh, I think the last interview was last spring. Chris, you can remind me, but <laughs> I don't know if I, or maybe last summer, I was working on a TV show called Pump. That stars yeah. Michael J. White, Ray J., Jennifer Freeman, McKinley Freeman. Yeah. And that's going to be released next month. So that's exciting. I'll be talking about that. Yes. And um, that's directed, written, and executive produced by Corey Grant. I was a producer on that project. Mm -hmm. Since then, I also shot and directed my first short film called Transgress, where I'm the director on. That's a spiritual thriller. Thank you. And that's a spiritual thriller. So that's a little different twist and take on Eve. So yeah. basically about two men that knock on the wrong door. Uh oh. Then I did uh, my first political project in Atlanta called Hands Up. I'm really excited about that. And that's a parallel of universes where we follow a family during slavery in 1855. Mm -hmm. And we follow them all the way up to 2020. And basically, things haven't changed since 1855. And that's a political piece. Yes. I yeah. Have to is, yeah. And, and, you know, it's a love letter to African American men. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, we're talking about what's happening in this country, the epidemic, because it's an epidemic of many black men being killed. And has anything really changed? And um, it's a statement piece. It was a hard film to shoot because really the state of Georgia really didn't support us on shooting this film. It was really hard to even get a plantation. So we're going to be talking about that. That would have been shown at the Cannes Film Festival uh, next month. But now Cannes, of course, has pushed everything back. And yeah. that would have been, we were going to release it first at a film festival. And that's called Hands Up. And I directed that as well. Right. And then I just finished a TV show in January called Laugh Tonight with Damon Williams. Then I was in the middle of shooting another TV show. Uh, don't judge me on the titles called Whole Phase, but spelled H-E-A-U-X. 
<laughs> and um, we were in the middle of shooting that uh, literally when this happened. Wow. So okay. doing a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff on the horizon also, and excited about tapping into so many different genres. Yeah, that's amazing. Sounds like you're still keeping busy too. That's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so tell us more about what's, um, how COVID-19 might be slowing down some things for you. How's yeah, that? I, really thought I needed the break. So for me, it wasn't yeah. a slow down. We're in post on Hands Up. Uh, we were just screening Transgress at different film festivals. And so we need to get that out there too. I'm in the middle of setting up my next faith base and another film in Atlanta. So I really needed the break, to be honest with you, because I was yeah. kind of working nonstop. And yeah. so this is a moment for me to slow down, reset, kind of catch up. I knew my film, A Question of Faith, was going to premiere on Easter, on Lifetime. Yes. So I need to start rolling that campaign out. So we've been promoting nonstop for the last week. And so I, I needed the break. And also it's a time just kind of reset, rethink, uh, right. meditate, figure out what you want to do in your future, uh, catch up on things that you've been procrastinating on. So yeah. uh, it's an unfortunate time, but also it's been kind of God's grace and mercy for a question of faith because we get to see a whole new audience gets to see our film that never seen it before. Yes, absolutely. Tell us, uh, tell us a little more about a uh, question of faith. Uh, what, uh, what drew you to that? What, how did this come about? Yeah. How did that project come about? Yeah. Yeah, I was at a conference and I was talking to Bishop T.D. Jakes and basically he was talking to about 30 of us uh, African-American filmmakers and was basically like, you guys are doing so much content, but you are missing an entire audience. Nobody's doing content for the African-American Christian audience and none of us were. Yeah. And he gave us a challenge to, to think about doing it. And I accepted the challenge because at the time, my investor wanted to do faith-based as well. It was a process on finding one. When we found one that I liked, once I talked to the writer who was Ty Manns, he agreed to our terms. And then that just started the process. We shot in Atlanta. What resonated with me on this film was the multicultural aspect of it. Three yeah. different families, three different cultures, dealing with texting and driving, dealing with race relations, dealing with organ donation. There were so many real elements that said, OK, I can do this faith based. I didn't want to do a preachy one. I wanted to do one that was realistic with flawed characters who really question their faith in God. And what better time will than now people are really questioning their faith in God. Exactly. So, Exactly. Yeah, I was definitely, uh, I was actually going to ask you about that too. Like this is, this is very timely. And a lot of people are going through a lot of things in their minds right now. And uh, some people are able to turn to faith. Some people aren't. So it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. Like if you're able to, you know, keep your faith strong during times like this, then, you know, a movie like that is, can be, you know, uplifting and, and it can feel good. Yeah, it's a perfect time. And um, who would have thought that our biggest audience would come a couple of years after it was released? It first came out in theaters in 2017. Mm -hmm. And um, then it was on Netflix and also available for video on demand. But I think we have a good chance for people to sit home as a family and watch it and really discuss some of these tough issues. There's a lot of tough issues in the film. Right. And I think people really need to step back and see them. Right. Right. So what what uh, what messages were you guys aiming to really, you know, hammer down on and get across? What types of messages? Yeah, yeah there's a lot of messages and themes in this movie. The main theme is there's three families and they all have their own issues. So we have the Danielson family, which is a white family that um, there's some issues of race with that family. Um, so they deal with what we are calling racial ra um, reconciliation. Uh, so that's their, that family's trials. But then also that family needed an organ. So that family has some issues. Then we have the Newman family, which is the black family that has issues of forgiveness. And, and that is led by a pastor of all people. The pastor, which is played by Richard T. Jones, is the most flawed. Oh, Who would yeah. have thought, right? Beautiful performance, by the way. Beautiful oh, thank you. Yeah. Who would have thought that a pastor would be the most flawed character of the film mm -hmm. and has issues of forgiveness? Uh, then we have Hispanic family um, that um, is dealing these grace. They need a little bit more mercy. You know, they don't need people to be so judgmental and so quick. So yeah. all three families are dealing with different themes. But overall, the film is supposed to push love grace, mercy, forgiveness, you know, just to look at our fellow neighbor 
with the human spirit and not always judge, be so quick to judge and not see the whole story. That's it. That's key. Dropping gems. Absolutely. Now, is, is there anything in the film that hits very close to home with you? you I mean, you don't have to go into no, anything sure. you're not sure. uncomfortable going into, but are there, are there any personal stories that you might? Absolutely. You know, my um, uncle, who now unfortunately has passed in August, um, had needed a heart transplant. And so God did grace him with a heart 10 years ago. Wow. And that really, so the organ donation part really struck home because I personally was not one who signed up ever to be an organ donor. And that's a very hot topic amongst Christians, whether or not we should tamper with the body. And I decided to become an organ donor as a result of this movie, even though I knew when my uncle was searching for a heart, we didn't care where it came from. We just wanted a heart. And th this is the touchy issues. And this film will make you go through it because some people agree, some people won't. But I know one thing that was very close to home because I know when we needed a heart, we didn't care where it came from. And um, unfortunately, an 18 year old passed away and that's who heart my uncle received. And we met that family and everything. And they were so grateful to even give their son's heart to us. This is some deep stuff. Yes. And I'm kind of maybe giving some stuff away in the movie, but you'll <laughs> see those themes and how they play out. But it's real life for me, what yeah. happened. And unfortunately, he passed away last August, though. Sorry, After man. getting the heart, I know, right? Yeah. So it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for making this movie because it, I, really, I, I really, I couldn't take my eyes off it. I couldn't, I couldn't, my heart was all in it. My soul was all in it. I was like, this is... This is what, you know, this is what we need right now. So thank you for that. Um, oh, you're welcome. Now I guess we could, you know, switch over a little bit. What, um, what advice do you have for, you know, young actors, directors, or producers, you know, who, you know, want to achieve, you know, that high level that you're achieving, let's say? Well, it's always a work in progress. I'm still working in progress, to be honest. But yeah. I do have a all? school called Backstage Pass. Yeah, we're all work in progress, right? We're all not happy where we are, but I do have a school that's called Backstage Pass in the Movie Industry where we do train and teach the business. And the purpose of what we try to teach is how to enter the business and how to conduct your business. So I say with anybody, before you enter the industry in whatever area, research, 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 prepare. Don't just write a script and you haven't even copywritten the script. Don't just write a script and you don't even have a package. You don't even know what a one sheet is. You don't even know what a deck is. You don't even know what a lookbook is. You know, there's some things that you need in order to get an agent or manager. Even yeah. for actors out there, which I teach mostly, have your package together. Like right now during this downtime, yeah. you should be getting your website together. Don't talk to me about you don't have a demo reel. I have a demo reel book coming out on April 15th. Don't talk to me about you don't know what a bio is or a resume. You don't have proper headshots. There are certain things you need to be prepared. If you want an agent or manager to take you seriously, you have to invest in your own career and take yourself seriously. So there's a lot of tips that I advise and give people that you could be doing in this downtime to be more prepared. For those writers out there, write the script, write the story. Yes. And then learn structure and format. Very key. Producers and first ADs, we can't really work on a script that's not properly structured or formatted. So learn that stuff. There's a lot of free classes being offered right now that you could be taking. Yeah. A lot of resources out there that you can be learning. Right now, you guys should be networking. Network with anybody and everybody. You just yep. hit them up, right? Just hit them <laughs> up. Be like, yep. hey, I know you're not doing anything. And even if they say they are busy, fine. Just keep hitting them up. They'll eventually respond. They'll look at your stuff. This is this downtime can be used in a positive way, depending on how you reset your mind. Right. Wow. Gems. Gems. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, Will. Amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. All right. And, you know, we won't hold you too much longer. Last but not least, uh, where can people find you? What are your uh, where, what are your socials? And mention uh, your class again, please. How do we? Oh, yeah. How do we find info on that? You can go everywhere from me to Miss Ms. Angela White com. Everywhere I'm Miss Ms. Angela White. That's branding, guys. My next book is branding that comes out in three months. Yes. Um, you want to be the same everywhere. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You Google me, whether it's on my Google panel, whether it's IMDb. 
My website is all Miss M.S. Angela White. Um, even if you want to email me, it's info at MissAngelaWhite.com. You know, branding, okay, my assistant, she just jumped in there. Thank you, Kristen. If yes. you go to the website, you'll see something called Backstage Pass. Just click on it. And it has so many different things that we offer. We, every week, have had writers on. So the writer from Sinners Wanted was our guest, Jimmy Jenkins, last week. You know, wow. teaching everybody about how he wrote, produced, and directed that script. The writer before that for the Clark Sisters, Camille Tucker, was our guest. So we have so many different guests. Last night, we had a question of faith writer and director. So we have guests. We have live calls. This Thursday coming up, we're doing a legal and finance seminar. And so you can find it right there at Backstage Pass. We, we're open to everybody, and we welcome everybody. But yes, thank you, Will. Everything you can find me is at Miss M.S. Angela White. So everything's good with you? Yes, everything's good. Everything's good. You know, I'm about to, uh, I'm just listening to your, all your gems and, you know, about to uh, put those into action, you know, still trying to. Uh, hit me up, hit me up. Yeah. I, oh, pff, most definitely. Most Chris is definitely. asking a question, uh, Will. I don't know if you see that. Chris has a question now. About, yeah, tell us about someone who inspires you. Yeah, there's so many people that inspire me. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like I have to pay it forward with the school. And there's a lot of people who've paid it forward with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I first have to start with my mother because without having some type of family support, I couldn't do what I do. So mm -hmm. all the sacrifices she's made has allowed me to be here. And then you move forward to your mentors. I have a lot of people who have poured into me that inspire me, but from if you just want to take it from a, a like a celebrity type perspective, you know, you have people like Ava DuVernay. You know, the first time I worked with Ava, I'm going really back on you guys now. A lot of people don't know Ava used to be a publicist. She used to be my publicist like 15 years ago when I was at Showtime. And, wow. and to see somebody who was working with me as a publicist in like 2005 and 2006 and to make her own way now into her own empire it's so rewarding and it encourages you. Even to see Dion Taylor, I used to be his attorney in 07, and to see how his career is just blowing up, um, to see you know, when you're part of people's like babies and when they're birthed, and then to see it come to life, it gives you more inspiration. Yeah. You know, when I worked with Dion Taylor, I wasn't really a full fledged producer at the time. I was dabbling in producing, but I was more doing a practicing attorney. And so it's, when I see things like this, I'm just like, wow, I can do it. I can knock it out the park. And I just have to keep going because it is a marathon. This is yeah. not overnight. I had Absolutely. Dion talk to my students at Sundance. Um, we travel to all the festivals. So at the, he talked to my students in January. And he was saying, hey, you know, it took 13 years for people to know who I am. And people are like, for real? I'm like, yeah, for real. Because I was one of his first attorneys and I, I wasn't even sure he would get here. So it's real. Yeah. <laughs> You're a part of people's journeys and you don't even know, you know, if they're going to get there. So it's really a marathon, not a sprint. But those are people that really inspire me right now because I've been a part of a little bit of their journey. And to see them just push forward and persevere, yeah. really, really important. Wow. Hey, Rodney Perry. Sorry, I'm just shouting out people. Hey, Nakia. <laughs> hey, Franklin. I love that. Sorry. People coming no, on no. in. <laughs> just having a great conversation here. Yeah, but I feel like, I feel like that energy definitely transfers because you see – uh, how successful they are and then you know that the energy rubs off on you and then you start having those aspirations and mm -hmm. it starts you know you start feeling it and getting motivated and you know keeping that circle is very key very yeah you know it lets you know too that if you just keep going that you can get there too uh and Ronnie Perry saying hello and Ronnie and I, I think Ronnie we did our first film like in 07 or 08 and it's 2020. The journey is still continuing right. for me and for him. And there's so many people I've known along the journey and it's taken a while and it's going to take a while. Nobody's an overnight success. Nobody. Oh yeah. Everybody, everybody's an overnight success. They've already done about 15 years. Yep. Real talk. Yep. That's, one, <laughs> so of, it's that's like... one of the biggest things I learned being in this business is that patience is everything. Oh. <laughs> and it's hard, right? Well, it's hard to be patient because you see other people doing it and you're just like, oh, when is my turn? Right. Chris has another yeah. question there. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Um, how do you, so how do you maintain those relationships? So someone, I guess someone like me, that's, not, that's one of the other things I learned early on in this business was because I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit shy and I'm a little bit of an introvert. 
And so okay. it being in this business, business, you have to come out of that shell. Like you're forced to, like you gotta be able to keep these, these relationships. Okay. Um, so how do you, how do you keep these relationships? What are your, you know, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, and it's hard. The best way for me to see people is at film festivals. Uh, that's the best place for me to connect because everybody's in their lives. I'm in LA, people are all over the country. Some people are outside the country shooting. And that's like the best time to try to go to some industry events. I'm not the best at emailing all the time to say, hey, how are you doing? But right. you do have to make sure you're out in the mix. So there's certain events that is good to go to, like award season in LA. Just go to the NWCP Image Awards. You'll see everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're, you know, a person of color, uh, you, you go to the Oscars if you're not. And you should go to Oscars anyway if you can. Or Oscar parties, you know, Golden Globe. You want to go to key events where you can at least still be present. Because people is out of sight, out of mind. I have seen actors that I love and just forgot about. And I'm casting something. And I'm like, oh, my God, they're perfect. Next thing you know, two days later, they're in the project. Literally. Because yeah. if I don't see you, it's not that I'm not thinking about you, you're just not on my radar at that moment. Because casting directors do the same thing. A lot of times casting directors cast actors they're seeing all the time. Right. Not because they don't think you're great. You're just not in their face. Right. <laughs> you're not maybe in their workshop. You know, mm -hmm. actors, you guys, the biggest trick for you guys, take certain casting directors' workshops. You will be cast in all their stuff that year. That's yes. a little tip, guys. Gems. <laughs> you'll be, in, you'll be in everything. You know why? Because they're seeing you every day. It's right. natural. It's so natural for them to be like, oh, you know what? So and so's on my mind. Hey, look at them. Right. Amazing. Completely agree. Yes. And Rodney, be deliberately social. That's. Yeah. That's and it's hard. Gem. A lot of us, we don't want to go out. We don't want to every. We feel like after 10 years, uh, you're tired of going out hustling every <laughs> night. It's, it's work. It's work. It's work. It's That's work. exactly what it is. That's exactly uh -oh. what it Chris is. Chris got another question. Lastly, let's talk about how important social media is for actors. Yeah, I, I feel like I've been hearing a lot of different things about mm -hmm. social media. So obviously, it's a great tool to promote yourself, promote what you do, um, maybe show some skills at some points. Um, and there's different levels of, you know, uh, people w where they're at in their career and so you know obviously it's going to be they're going to tailor their social media to where they are so what do you what's your uh you know what's your perspective on that how do we use social media to you know be better yeah. now social media is required at this point i know a lot of actors get upset like why does so-and-so get cast over me and I'm better, or they feel that you know, they're give, more gifted or a better actor. And a lot of times you have to have built your own audience. Right. right now, social media, if you utilize it correctly, you can draw people to you. You can draw somebody like me to you. You can draw Will Packer to you. You can draw casting directors to you. Create your own content, post it. Yeah. You, you feel nobody's checking you out, guess what? Start posting some funny sketches or start posting some serious sketches. Start making some noise. People will come to you. And you do have to have a following. I know actors get so upset when they hear me say this, but you do. Remember, guys, it's a business. Okay? Right. So if I'm going to invest my time, money, and resources into you, I need to make sure that there's a payoff, right? It's just like you buying something, not a bad, you know, you want a nice pair of shoes, right? You don't right. want shoes that are going to fall apart as soon as you walk out the store. So it's right. just the same with actors. You want to buy into people that there's a payoff. So six months from now when the project comes out, you have an audience that will go and see the film. Now, right. if you only have five people following you, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get a payoff with you the same as I would with so with somebody else exactly. now i know somebody saying you know their son spends too much time on social media we're talking about using social media though as a business you that's should be mom. monetizing that's your mom yeah <laughs> oh hi mom she said you're on social media too much is that your mom for real that's my mom she's crazy. Oh. Well, she's on you. she says you're on social media too much but we're <laughs> talking about monetizing social media into a business for you right. and really making it work for you if you do it right, you get a fans, you get a group of people. Hey, the only thing, you can do more than acting. You can become a brand ambassador. 
You can sponsor a product. There's so much more you can do, but you have to start creating the brand. Remember, you guys, you are the product. Right. You are the product. So now yep. you have to put your product out there. You have to market the product. You should be loaning out or legally lending out your services to others. So think of yourself as McDonald's. Right. Now you want to just put your product out there. You want everybody to know McDonald's. Who's McDonald's? What are you about? You can also control the content on social media. Yeah. Nobody else can tell your story better than you, right? Exactly. Put your story out there. Put the pictures you want out there. If somebody says something that's wrong, correct it through your social media. So our social media is really necessary at this point. Look at everybody who's online right now. Yeah. Look at everybody's online right now. Right now, you guys can be killing it. You could be reaching out to people. Hey, I'm so and so and so and so. You can be building your following. You can be posting monologues. Look, Leah Daniels Butler, she's the casting director on the show that I just had a stop that I'm on. She's up here offering virtual auditions. Yeah, uh, open casting. There's a lot of open castings going out there too. Make sure you Will get Packer, your isn't he doing something like that tomorrow? Yeah. Some type of auditions? Will Packer, come on, folks. Don't think they're not going to check out your social media. Yep. Don't post junk too. Post stuff that really reflects your brand, you know, what you're about. Right. Just post that too. You know, sometimes people are posting foolishness. <laughs> Remember guys, you, you're a product, you're a brand. You want to post things that you want to put out there and you yeah. want companies to put money into you. Yeah. You think all the actors are broke right now? No, a lot of these actors mm -hmm. are making money off of sponsorship deals, ambassador yeah. deals. That overtime, exactly. Yeah, like exactly. there's a business you can create. And mm -hmm. social media can work for you. You guys could be writing books right now on something. You have an audience. It's something you're good at, whether it's cooking something. It's something everybody's good at, right? Yeah. You could be writing an ebook right now, putting it out to your audience and making a couple coins while this is happening. There's a lot of ways to monetize social media to win for you. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I, couldn't I can't believe your mom's on here. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, she's my biggest fan, biggest supporter. You know, hey, mom. <laughs> she's like you're on social media too much yeah come on that's not even true she's all the way in the bed you know yeah you don't know what i'm doing over here <laughs> chris just said all the celebrities are on ig live yeah look at them the celebrities yeah. out here hustling for followers yeah now the celebrities hustling for followers mm -hmm. what does that tell you you got to get out there and get the people to know right. who you are too you exactly. can essentially go to a network studio production company and say hey this is my package and all the followers that come with it this is the work that i do look at youtube you can become a youtube star if you wanted to and a network will take you seriously even right. if you've never really acted before yeah i'm sorry i know they, they hate when i say that though no, no no we've we've seen that a lot this past yeah. you know, two decades since you know vine and and snapchat and all that okay you know, IG, but yeah, no, that's, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't want to, you know, hold you any longer. It's, no, it's, oh, it's Friday. If anybody has questions, though, I'm here. If, if, <laughs> if, there, if, there's all good. Else, if there's anything else that, you know, you'd like to say, you'd like to talk about, I'm, we're here. No, we're no, here anybody, I'll check real quick. If anybody has questions, they can send them to you to post, yes. but, um, I, I just love the industry and I love what we're doing. And I love the fact we can even do these IG lives. That's yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Think about that, how social media, we're able to still stay connected. Right. And um, not lose a beat. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't have any excuses to not be able to stay connected at this day and age. We got all the tools now. We got all the tools. Now I'm just double checking. So everybody, the film is called a question of faith. Yes. It comes on Lifetime this Sunday night, uh, and it starts at 8 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. Uh, we're also supporting the Clark Sisters, which comes on tomorrow night. Same thing, 8 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. We're calling it Stay In and Stay Inspired Weekend. So it's full of faith, uh, question of faith. We'll have you on an emotional journey. But I hope at the end of the film, you leave inspired or you feel inspired. But it definitely will take you on an emotional journey. I'm just double checking to see if anybody has questions. There's one. Right. How do you feel about the industry when folks of color aren't getting more roles? 
I feel because, we have to. Let me see the question. That, that's what they said, just like that. Yes. Yeah, so, how do you? Uh, that's your mom do, again. Do you see any? <laughs> yeah, I know it's my mom again. Do you see any? First of all, do you see any disparities uh, in people of color not getting enough roles still? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's a disparity gap. Absolutely. There's a divide uh, behind the camera is even worse than in front of the camera. Uh, absolutely. And I think what has to happen is we have to create more content for ourselves and we have to become more behind the camera. Right. See, a lot of times people are looking for people who don't even look like them to give them a role. Why? Right. Uh, it's, as hard as that sounds. Uh, a lot of times people give roles or they write stories that are true to them. So if I grew up in a suburban town, and even if it's diverse or if I'm, all my friends are white and some of my friends are black, I'm writing a story to compare to my life, right? Right. So a lot of times you have to have more writers. That's where the diversity has to start. You need more directors who will demand diversity. You need more producers of color. Because now you have other people, a melting pot, telling different stories from a different perspective. So a lot of times it's hard to say, why aren't there more actors of color when the writers, if the, if the writing room is all white, there's not gonna be more roles of color like you think, it's gonna be more systematic. Right. You know, almost a form of affirmative action. Oh, we need one black person mm -hmm. in this TV show. We don't want that, we want true diversity. So when you see something like Fast Furious, Vin Diesel, who's of color, is a producer. So, of course, he's going to command, I want this cast to look like how I grew up. Right. And that's how we make the change is behind the camera. We have to push for more writers, more producers and directors of color. And we have to start creating our own content. Look what Tyler Perry's done. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't really have to answer to anybody about having traditionally an all African-American cast. He can do that. So we need more Tyler Perry's. We need more producers. I know so many people want to be in front of the camera. Um, but we really need to be behind the camera, too. And we need to push our actors who do have the power behind the camera to make sure they keep creating stories for us. That's important, too. That's right. That's Diverse right. stories. Yep, the writing's yeah, room. Yeah, so we have to hold people accountable. <laughs> the writing's room, you know, it's really important. Like, a lot of people don't really understand the power in TV of the writer's room. Exactly. They're writing the stories. The, yep. creator, the, the creator is important. The showrunner is really important. Uh, the more diverse showrunners we have, the more you'll see diversity. You know, I give it up to Ryan Murphy. He always keeps diversity around him. He gives opportunities to a lot of uh, writers of color. And, and if you notice in a lot of Ryan Murphy's shows, at least in the last, say, three or four years, they're very diverse cast a lot of times. Yeah. And he's, he's pushing it even more. And then he, he created Pose, and now it's really diverse. And we, we need more people to do that. You'll see more of us on screen, Mom, if you see that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your mom an actor, too? Exactly. Is my mom an actor? <laughs> she asked an acting question, so she's asking for you. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I think she's just asking to joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure she, if she's in the business. She'd be singing. No, no. She knows She knows a little bit about it. She's, uh, you know, she used to model and, and whatnot, but yeah, at least. <laughs> 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 she said, how do you find the right agent or manager? Like, how, what, what was your, um, I, I guess, what was your path like in finding your representation? Yeah, and I used to be a talent manager for 12 years. So a lot of times people get confused between manager and agent. They do two totally different roles. Right. So let's start with the manager. The manager is going to develop you. The manager is going to nurture you. The right. manager is going to help you find an agent. They're going to help introduce you to writers, producers, directors, network studios. They're going to set up the generals, which are general meetings for you. That's their job. They're in there for the long haul. They're getting sometimes a higher percentage. Sometimes they'll get 15%, unlike the 10% an agent will get. In this rare cases, managers will even ask for a little bit more. But their job is different. People get them confused with an agent. An agent is licensed by the state. An agent is only regulated to get 10%. Their job is to find you employment. Right. Think of like a headhunter. Think of like a temp agency. That's really what an agent is. If they don't make any money with you, they're going to drop you. Right. So if, they, if you're not making money, they're not making money. Their only job is to find you work. 
Now, you have to make sure you give them the tools to be able to find you work. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a demo reel and you don't have a good headshot and a bio mm -hmm. written and you don't have a good social media profile, something to give them to work, how are they going to get you work? Remember, their job is not to develop you or nurture you. Yes. That's the manager. So you, a lot of people get this confused. They're with their agent. They're like, well, the agent didn't really set up a photo shoot for me or the agent really didn't help me change my bio or resume. That's not what they're going to do. Their job is to take you and make some money. Right. And people really get that confused and they get frustrated with their agent. Like, well, the agent's really not out there telling me which acting classes to go to or really not out there helping build the career. They don't build careers. You build your career. Yeah. That's who yeah. builds the career. You yeah. have to build it. Then you have a manager that's going to help nurture it, develop it. And then an agent is supposed to go to work. Right. So as you can also fire the agent. If they're not getting you work, you can let them go too and find another agent. Yeah. That's what their job is. In fact, a lot of states, managers get in trouble, and California is one of them, for procuring work. When I started as a talent manager of a bunch of comedians, which if Ronnie's still on, he'll tell you. Uh, I used to find the work for the comedians because we didn't have an agent. So I had to book them shows and, and find the work. I could have gotten into a lot of trouble because managers are not, we're not licensed by the state. We're not supposed to find you work. But of course, if you're managing somebody, you're going to try to find them work. You don't right. want them not working. So it becomes very delicate between managers and agents. So once we got an agent and all my talent was with CAA, CAA I stopped finding them work. And we started regulating to the uh, regular roles. Personally, right now, I don't have a manager agent. I was with Gersh up until two years ago. Right. And I was finding all my work. So I felt, you know, it was a mutual part of the ways. If I'm finding all my work, I'm not going to share in my commissions. So mm -hmm. I also want to have somebody who represents me who's finding work that I have, don't have to do anything. It should just be presented to me. If I still have to go out there and do all the meetings and set up everything and ask me finding my own work. And I tell people, you don't have to have an agent and manager. Right. People get that so confused. Like I have to have one. You can have a good attorney, which I do. I have a law firm that represents me who can do all your deals. Yep. Trust and believe. There's big talent like Chris Rock, Wanda Sykes. They don't have an agent or manager anymore. They stopped doing that years ago. Uh, yeah. So they just have a good attorney. So you really need to make sure before you start giving away your commissions that the person is really working for you. They yeah. should be working hard. When I was a talent manager, I was busting my butt like 12 to 15 hours a day for them to meet people, for them to find people. It's, it's no joke to be a manager. Right. No joke. Right. Yeah. You got to be a go-getter. You got to be mm -hmm. a go-getter. And you got to be out there working. You yeah. need to be out there meeting people and stuff. You'll probably find more work on your own before you find the right agent. Because now yeah. you have some credits, right? Now the yeah. agent is like, oh, you've been on this show, that show, that show. Okay, now I can take you, package you, and put you on this project. Right. Right. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I, I don't, I don't want to hold you any mm -hmm. longer. Thank you so much. I really, Thank really you, Will. Thank appreciate you, Chris. it. And I can't wait to work with you. I'm putting it oh, out there. That'd be good. Where, do you, where, are you at? where are you based at? I'm in L.A. Oh, you know, like okay, so we have to meet after the uh, coronavirus in person. Let's definitely do that. Let's definitely. So do it's that. nice meeting you. Thank you, Chris, for having me. Thank you, Black Soul Solutions. I love your platform. I love what you're doing, and um, all blessings to everybody. Please see the film A Question of Faith this Sunday on Lifetime, eight o'clock Eastern and eight o'clock Pacific. Thank, thank you. you so much. And where can we follow you again? Miss M S Angela White. I'll put it in right now before I hang up. But that's where you can find me everywhere on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, my website. Brandon, guys, you want to make it easy where people can find you. That's right. That's right. It should be really, really easy. Yep. Um, somebody yep. said, can someone hire me? <laughs> I stopped managing a long time ago. That's my student. <laughs> I, love I stopped that. managing in 2005. Rasana, I think I got your name right this time. <laughs> But yeah, stop man. Managing really takes everything out of you. Right. And um, if you really are not committed to it, it's, it's, you need to stop. Yeah. It's a full-time job. Yeah. I was going to um, say, my sister just time. put up my one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I do is. a lot of one-on-one -on -one with actors, like the youngest actress on Mixes, Michael Michelle, was my student for a while. And it doesn't matter the age. I started with her at five. Now she's seven. 
So I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching for people who really need the training of how to navigate the business from getting rid of an agent, finding the right agent, how to put a package to submit yourself to the right agent. There's a lot of tricks and a lot of ways that you can position yourself for people to take you seriously. Indeed, indeed. You want to know more? That's how you can find me. Yeah, come find Miss Angela and go to that website. So, thank you. Appreciate thank you. you. Okay, so, thank you guys. I look God forward to talking to you later. All right. Nice meeting you, Will. Bye-bye. Nice meeting you.